Hi, we're going to discuss setting up your Windows operating system. So I'm going to take it from the point of you actually downloading and installing Java and you downloading and installing Notepad++. So at this point, you have Java on your computer and you have Notepad++. We're going to start by making sure that we have our environment variable set up correctly. You are going to need the bin folder of the Java JDK that you've downloaded inside of your path variable. So let's go ahead and look for the location of our Java folder. So it typically gets installed under your C drive, under program files, then under Java, and then you should see a folder named JDK. In your JDK folder, you're gonna see a bin folder. Go ahead and click on that. And inside the bin folder are all the applications that your JDK came with. There's a bunch in here. You can look through them all, kind of get familiar with them. But the two that we're gonna use primarily for this course is the Java, which is right here, and the Java C, which is the compiler, which is right there. So let's go ahead and copy our path. So just go up and click on this path, Control C to copy, or you can right click to copy. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our advanced system settings. So the way I do that is I'll go under to my uh, search uh, bar right here, and I'll go ahead and start typing advanced system settings and I'm gonna stop right there I didn't finish the, the what I was typing but it already popped up so I'm gonna click on view advanced system settings I'm gonna click on that and then I'm going to go to environment variables click on that I'm gonna look for the path variable okay so under system variables you'll see a path variable and it's right here now I know some students have had problems with uh, and stuff with doing this so they actually put the path to the JDK and the JDK does have the uh, Java on it as well, the GRE. But sometimes you'll have a previously installed version of the uh, GRE. So the version of the new GRE that you're trying to install is um, later than the one that's previously installed. So when you go to compile, you'll compile in a new version of Java, but then you're trying to run it on an older version of Java. Now, as you can see, if you look through your environment variables, if you just kind of like look and see what they're actually pointing to. So my very first one is under my C drive, program files, common files, Oracle, Java, then Java path. I want to go ahead and check out that folder. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back um, to my C drive. And then from here, I'm going to go under program files. It was under the program files x86. I'm going to go to common files and then to Oracle, Java, and then Java path. Now, the only reason I'm here is because I saw that entry inside of my environment variables. Now you can see that it's pointing to a, a Java program, a Java W and Java WS. So there is a version of the Yari that's already installed, but I wanna go ahead and remove that entry inside of my environment variables. Okay, so I'm gonna remove it from my path so that I can put in my new bin folder that has the GRE and, and all these other tools inside of it. And, and I'm doing this so that there's no conflict in which version I'm using. In, like in some cases, like if you have a version of like Java 12 and you're compiling Java 12, but then you're trying to run the application in Java 8, you're gonna see some, some strange errors. And I have known at least three students like in my face-to-face -face class has had that problem. And I had to just, I, immediately I saw what it was and I was able to correct it. But if you see something similar, uh, you look through your environment variables, you see something where it's saying Java path, go ahead and just remove that entry. So I'm just gonna click delete, and then I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna paste in my entry. So I already have it in on my computer, but what you need to do is you need to go to new, and then go ahead and control V in your location of the bin folder for your JDK. So go ahead and do that. And then once you've done that, just press okay. Press okay to everything, okay. Now we're going to go to our command prompt. And we're going to just run and see if we have Java C and a runtime environment also installed. So I'm going to go and type the command Java C minus version dash version. See which version of Java I'm running. And then I'm also going to see which version of the uh, Jerry that I'm running Java minus version. Okay. So you can see that I have them both installed. They're both the versions match up. So I'm good to go. So at this point, I'm able to compile and run Java programs. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna open up my Notepad++. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new Java file. I'm going to go to save as, and I'm going to save this off my desktop because it's easier for me to get to my desktop whenever I'm in command prompt. So I'm going to go to desktop and I'm going to create a new folder. Now the folder I'm going to create, I'm going to name it something relative to what I'm doing. So I'm going to say my Java programs. And I'm going to give this file the name of my favorite book. And I'm going to select Java source file as my file type. Okay, now I, I wanna, one thing you need to verify is that you have the .java as your file extension on the file that you're trying to save. I see that there. So I'm going to go ahead and save this file. Now I'm going to go ahead and write a program. Now one of the first things I want to do is I want to put a code comment with my name, date, and uh, assignment number and all that up top. So I'm going to go ahead and just write a code comment really quick. So I'm going to do you know, slash star and then a star slash. And here I'll put my name. I'll put the date. I'll put the assignment and which class I'm in. Okay. And then outside of the code comment, I'm going to go ahead and create my class header. So public class and then the name of my class. The name of your class must match the name of your file. It's case sensitive. So if you're using uppercases in your the name of your file, then you have to use uppercases in the name of your class. So my favorite book, open and close curly braces. So with inside of the class, I'm going to indent and I'm going to go ahead and add in the main method header, public, static, void, main. Open, close parentheses, add in my string array and arguments, open, close, curly braces, and inside of my main method, I'm gonna go ahead and write one line of code. So that code is going to be me printing out a string of the title of my favorite book to the console. So the console object is represented by system.out, then I'm gonna invoke the method print line. Okay, so it's print line. Uh, this L right here is a lowercase L, right? So you have print and then LN, some students get that confused with the I or a one, but that's actually a lowercase L. And within the parentheses, I'm going to go ahead and make a string literal. We'll talk more about strings in chapter two of the textbook, but you do that with double quotes. So I'm going to do double quotes and then inside the double quotes, I'm going to type the title of my favorite book and that's Java Software Solutions, ninth edition. All right, I'm going to go ahead and save this. So you need to take note of where you're saving your Java file. So I know that I saved my Java file off of my desktop and I created a folder called, well, I didn't create a folder. Did I create a folder? I didn't, dang it. I thought I did. Well, I did create the folder, but I didn't save the file into the folder. Okay, well, it's no problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I'm going to close this file out, close this out. Here's my file on my desktop. I'm going to just drag it into my folder. That way it's inside the folder that I created to host all my Java files. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to command prompt and I'm going to change. I'm going to go into the directory of where my Java file is located. Okay. So there's, um, there's a command that you have to use. It's CD, which stands for change directory. Uh, directory is, is like another term for a folder. So I'm basically moving into a different folder. This is uh, like, you know, double clicking on a folder with like inside of the GUI, but we're using uh, text to do that. Okay, so it's change directory. I wanna go ahead and put, I, want, I know I wanna go to the desktop, so I'm gonna put D-E-S-K and I'm gonna press tab and it's gonna auto-complete for me. And then I'm gonna do a backslash and then I'm gonna type in the name of the folder off the desktop that I wanna go into, which is my Java programs. I'm just gonna type the M and the Y and tab it out. And I'm going to press enter. And now you can see that I am actually in this folder. Now I want to view what's actually in this folder. So I'm going to type the command dir and press enter. And you can see that the file that I created, my favorite book.java, is in this folder. So now what I want to do is I want to compile this file. Now we're going to use the Java C command to compile. So I'm going to type the command Java C. And then the file that I want to compile, which is my favorite book, I'm just going to type mi. Press tab to autocomplete. It puts the file extension on there. I do want the file extension whenever I'm compiling. I'll press enter. 
And if you don't get any any like uh, feedback after pressing enter, that means everything went well. To verify that you actually did compile your Java file into bytecode, bytecode is what the Java runtime environment actually reads and interprets in order to run your program. What we're gonna do is type dir again and see what we have in our folder. Now you can see I have two files. I have my Java file where I typed in all my syntax and then I have the bytecode that was generated from compiling. So now the next step is to run this bytecode. I'm gonna run the bytecode with the Java command. Okay, so I'm gonna type in Java and then the name of the class, MI, or excuse me, MY, and I'm gonna press tab, I'm gonna tab it out. Now when you're putting in, now you're, when you're specifying the bytecode that you wanna run, you don't need the file extension, you just need the name of the class. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that class at the end of this. That's all I need, I'm gonna press enter, and you can see my program ran, and it outputted exactly what I said to output. Okay, so that is using Notepad++. Now the nice thing about Notepad++ compared to other IDEs is it's really simple to use, right? Um, some other IDEs like Eclipse, like they add in a bunch of extra files and you can see that it actually um, color codes everything for you so you can kind of see what the reserved words are, right? So public class and static and void, those are all the reserved words. It, it colors the text for you and you can also compile and run a program within Notepad++. Now there's a PDF that I posted on Canvas that explains how to do that. You could probably also Google it. it. It's essentially just adding a plugin and writing out the commands to compile and run the Java program.